Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf, and I'm here with Kristen Merlin. Hey. So, first of all, you have had a really, 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 really busy last couple of years. And, uh-huh. <laughs> yes, and it, it's just, for me, um, I started watching you on season six of The Voice. And, you know, I know that there's a lot of voice fans out there. So, can you tell us what that experience was like for you? It's pretty much the most stressful year of my life, <laughs> but it was like the most incredible experience I've ever gone through and something that I'm blessed to be able to uh, have been a part of and would do it all over again if I give a chance. <laughs> oh, that's, see, that's great to hear. I don't always, I don't always hear that from people. Some people say, oh, it was really, really great, but I'd never want to do it again. So that's... Yeah, but for me, I think the, the best part of it was um, going through and just growing as a person, growing as an artist, and then meeting so many great people along the way, whether... It was other contestants or mm-hmm. it was people working on the crew or even the coaches. Um, but so it was just like every aspect of it, you, you just, for me, I took away as much as I possibly could. Right, right. Now, I know that you were on Team Shakira. And I know, I'm, oh, my God, it was so funny watching Adam. Like, he wanted you so badly on his team. So when Blake stood up for Shakira and was like, no, you need to be with her because because of your voice and your techniques, I thought, oh, my gosh. This is great. She's got to do this. And then you did, and it was so awesome. But what was it like having the two of them, like, fight over you? It, it was completely surreal. I mean, it, in the moment, I don't even think I was – it was like an outer body experience. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really weird because even after coming off stage, I was I was like, just seen a ghost. Everyone was like, are you okay? I'm like, I think, I think so. Like, you know, trying to wrap my brain around right. what just happened. Right. Um, Because even when I was performing and they turned around, it still didn't really register like, hey, you're on the show now and you get to choose. (laughs) Right, right. It it was an incredible feeling to have people of such, you know, their their caliber um, competing over trying to get me on their team. Right. And I think one of my favorite lines ever um, with the coaches fighting and giving reasons why they, they should have you. The best one ever by far to in, in the history of The Voice to me was Shakira saying, you know, I have 20 million Twitter followers and these guys, you know, combined to what, I don't know if it was 17 million or whatever it was, but it was that to me was one of the funniest moments that I remember sitting in my living room going, yes, pick her, pick her. <laughs> so, right. I, yeah, I was really excited, but you had some moments on that show that, um, were very profound moments and had people crying. And, you know, when you sang I Drive Your Truck and you sat down on that stage, I was sitting in my living room crying my eyes out like a little baby. And I remember my <laughs> daughter saying, Mommy, are you okay? And I was like, this is just such a sad song. <laughs> like, But you delivered oh, it so well and you can tell you are so experienced and so skilled with your music and and that is beautiful and I don't know if people tell you that enough or not but bravo to you and I I just I I, I'm so excited that that you're doing so many things with your music and I can't wait for more because you you know what's funny about that uh the song I drive the truck um a song that I I was somewhat connected to because of the origin of the song and where it came from and Mm -hmm. Uh, the idea of the song was actually from a son of a gentleman who is a couple towns over from me back home. And um, so that's why I kind of really wanted to dig into that. Plus, there's kind of another backstory with it. But when I sat down on that stage while performing, if you go back and listen to it, there's a moment where I was really choked up and almost started crying. And so then I stand back up <laughs> because I always start to lose it. And I, my voice yeah. is just a little bit to hear it. It was crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, I was just, I was seriously just bawling in my living room. You, the the emotion you delivered was so intense and you just, you do it so well in every single song that you sing. I mean, even in Gunpowder and Lead, I mean, you were so just energetic and just full of attitude with that song. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then you can look, you looked over and you saw Blake, Blake, you know, Shelton, nodding with approval you know just like yeah Yeah, she's doing this right (laughs) like I that's what I was gonna ask like what was that like for you I mean here he is you know he knows that song well you know and he's just nodding in approval like holy cow well the scary part for me I think was uh previous to that show I was um in the back lot hanging out with Miranda and kind of going through what songs we should I should go for next and um I was nervous to even say that I was doing her song, <laughs> but oh. 
because you know she she kills it. That's that's her thing. Right. But, uh, I was trying to take it on myself. <laughs> right? No, it was you do you could sing anything. You could sing the phone book and it would be amazing because you have one of those voices that I think is so desperately needed in the music world and especially with country music and you know females in the in the country music world, you know, they're starting to gain a lot of momentum here, but I mean, we sure. we seriously needed some really amazing female singers and you are definitely one of them and I I'm, I'm so excited excited that you're a country music singer and I know that you just recently moved to Nashville right I did actually you know what today I just finished putting my room together so I'm excited nice <laughs> I feel settled I feel ready and I you know I'm starting to really gear up for uh, what's coming next and, and that would be starting songs for the next album um, right. I do a lot of writing while I'm here which is awesome it's really exciting to be involved in, in the pool of talent that's down here there there definitely is i know um i actually moved out there in 2013 and right now i'm currently in california um that's a whole long story but i'm kind of stuck here for a little <laughs> bit um but i'm dying to move back to nashville because really there's just there's so much talent out there and i don't think enough people get enough credit um and so that's why I, i'm so glad that you know center stage we're reaching out to all the you know up and coming and the newer artists because you you the, the pool of talent out there is just incredible and um i'm i'm excited for everything you have coming now you have um you have a new out or a new ep that yes called is, boomerang yes and that one is on your on your website so when people log on to your website they're going to start hearing boomerang and um you wrote that song didn't you Boomerang is the only one on the EP that I did not write. Um, my producer and his sister actually wrote that oh. one. Uh, but oh. when I heard the demo of it, we just happened to be sitting in the studio. And he's going through a bunch of random things and folders, and he, he played back to me, and I said, I have to have that. Um, so right, that right. Was. <laughs> oh, no, it's great. And, I'm, I mean, it's it's very, very immediately you want to hear more. Um, y your vocals on that song are just, it, they're so, they're so great. I, I loved every se second of it. Um, and one of your originals, A Little While, that song um, is a very beautiful song. And I think everyone who loves country music needs to, needs to get that song. Um, I, I, that song just really spoke to me. I really liked that. So what, what was it like for you writing, writing that one? I know most songwriters have personal experiences that they put into their, their music. Sure. That one actually started off uh, when I sat down that day to write. It was completely different. It wasn't even that song at all. Um, mm. And I happened to just move my capo and start goofing around with some chord progressions. And I started playing a little lick, and I said, that sounds really country. All right, let me see what I can do with that. And I start humming random things and just recording everything and then going back through and just piecing things that I like together. And there that song came. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I love hearing that. I love I love stories on how you guys, you know, make things happen because I'm sitting over here like, okay, I can talk on the phone, but I am definitely not that creative. You know, I can <laughs> throw some Christmas decorations up in my house, but I am not by any means one of those creative people. So um, kudos to you. I, I love that. And you were, you're also a self-taught guitar player, which that blows my mind mm -hmm. in and of itself. Like I, I spent years in band and marching band in high school, but I never could have taught myself. <laughs> well, my mom had come home randomly one day and said she had something for me, and I was really thrown off guard. And she comes out of the uh, the other room with the guitar, and I said, "Well, okay, <laughs> thank you. I have, I guess I'll, I'll learn how to play it." You know, so I, I started going online, and and this is like before the days of YouTube and all those videos. Right. So I was trying to figure out chord charts and stuff, and figuring out where my fingers go, and having friends try to teach me, but. It was oh, wow. a hell of a time, honestly. I, for the longest time, I couldn't play it and sing at the same time. <laughs> it was so frustrating, and I was getting ready to just, like, throw it out the window, and then it was like a light switch went on one day. I was like, oh, oh well, there that is. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it was like, okay, now you can play. <laughs> That's fun. Right. Yep. That's awesome. Now, you also, you went, you went to college, and you were studying music, weren't you? I did. I went to, and I actually have a BA in music and sound recording. That's that's incredible. So that's that's got to be where all of your, you know, experience with your voice. I don't know. You're just you're so talented. You're I, I was telling, you know, Tommy, um, getting ready for the interview. I was like, you have no idea. She is the most talented female that I have ever had the chance to speak to. I said, 
she's just so great and it comes through your your schooling whatever it is it just it comes through in every single one of your songs and um i don't think there's a cover that you could do that wouldn't sound better than the original because oh well, thank you no you're what you i you're amazing and you know you do a lot of sugar um sugarland songs that that I've heard and so and then when I saw that you were singing on stage with them at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas I was like okay she's got to be a huge fan and that's got to be one of the most amazing moments for you so what was that like that was like a freak thing actually um my older sister had called me and told me about this contest that was going on and uh briefly mentioned you know Sugarland something or other look it up whatever and for a little bit I let it go and there was a down day that I had so I was like what was that I looked it up and it was just a submitted video of you singing Baby Girl. And um, so I had, you know, just for, for shits and giggles, I had my friend record me doing it at one of my shows and we sent mm-hmm. it on in. Um, and I happened to be out on a lake with my friends when I came back. I had a missed call on my phone and there was a message saying, congratulations, you've won. You're coming out singing with them in Vegas in two days. <laughs> oh, jeez. So. I mean, I found this out on a Friday. I, I was flying on Saturday. I sang on Sunday, back on Monday. So it was it was a whirlwind, but it was amazing. Oh, I I can't imagine. Oh my goodness, and and just being on stage. I mean, they have a lot of fans. So, you know, and I know the Mandalay Bay because I've been there for several concerts myself. That's a lot of people. Were you nervous at all? Um, yes, I was until I got on stage. Once I got on stage, I feel home when I'm on a stage, you know, when I have the energy of the audience and right. the the great band I had behind me, obviously. And um, right. it was really, it was incredible to rock to their fans, nerve right. wracking to sing one of their songs. Yeah. Oh, that's, so, I, I, I'm ex- the, so excited. Sorry. The cool part about that was afterwards when I came off, I kind of just went, I went back into like, you know, general admission area and right. walked around and. Um, the rest of the night walking through casinos and stuff, I was getting stopped and pictures taken and all this stuff. So that was like the start of it all for me. I was like, okay, I didn't get used to this. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Now, there's there's another song that you sang, and I know everybody knows this song because it was in 2011 you sang the national anthem at Fenway Park. I did. That performance that- also brought me to tears. I can't, that was perfect. Thank you. You know what the funny thing is? is people are always their worst critics. And I think to date, that is my only performance that I ever came off of proud of myself going, you know what? I can't even complain about one single note in that song. Nope. I was happy. It was really cool. It was it was the most perfect delivery I have ever heard of that song. And I mean, obviously, we have heard that song from so many people, you know, and so many times. And it's just, no, that you hit everything perfect. Everything was amazing. There's not one thing. I don't even think Simon Cowell could have said anything wrong with that song. Like, <laughs> that <laughs> it was just, no, it was a, it was absolutely a stunning performance. And you really do need to be proud of yourself for that one. And um, you definitely made everybody else proud, proud, you know, during that song. It, it was a stellar performance. It was definitely amazing. <laughs> And um, one of your other credits that I, you know, just in case the fans don't know, um, is that in 2009, the Boston Nightlife Awards um, named you South Shore's Best Acoustic Solo Act. Did you even know that? I about that one. Well, I'm like, so I'm, you don't feel like I'm stalking you or anything, but I always do my research <laughs> before I do my interviews because I don't want to sound like an idiot. For sure. But, but when, I, when I read that, I was like, okay, I want to know more about this. So... You know, obviously, you had been playing around a lot for them to have named you the best acoustic solo act. So what was that experience like for you in Boston? Um, I've just had really great luck having amazing venues to play to and therefore having really great crowds to become fans and the most of them become friends, actually. Um, And the funny thing about that award was I didn't even know I was up for it until I was getting notification that... um, that I had won. <laughs> and oh, that's I was like, funny. Oh, okay, wait, wait, what did I win? You know, like I didn't realize what I was uh what I was in the running for, but that to me just spoke volumes because I just have great support all over New England and um so I mean that was just one more thing to kinda well, yeah. extra med keep doing what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, that, that band or the, you know, the, the people who put on the, those awards, I mean, they had to hear about you from somewhere. So, and if you weren't the one who was like, Hey, check me out, you know, then right. it, that definitely has to speak volumes because who, 
who was telling them about you? It had to have been your fans and the people at the venue, you know, that booked you or whatever. So that, that definitely to me would be, you know, a, a really huge moment for me. So um, congratulations on that. That's, that's great. And um, your energy on stage, where does that come from? Cause you, <laughs> I have a really hard time sitting still. So I think I, I struggled actually. Me and Shakira kind of got into it a little bit. Uh, I'd like to move around quite a bit. And right. she would always tell me to not move so much and stand still a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I feel like she had an easier time with me when I had the uh, the ballad. Right. I didn't really do much with it. But um, you even yeah. had her standing up, rocking out while you were performing. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and that's a good thing. I, mean, I like to have fun, and yeah, I feel like if I have that kind of energy, the audience starts to do the same if they don't right. already have it, and then that right. bounces back and forth the whole time, and it just makes everything that much more enjoyable. And uh, right. shows back home, my fans are used to me coming, you know, jumping off stage and hopping on the bar top or running through the crowd and dancing with them. So uh, right. when I got to do the tour, it was really fun because I started in the back of the theaters and I would always run through the crowd for my number. And uh, that that was me. That's just how I roll. <laughs> right. No, and I love it. And I mean, um, you could see it, you know, moment one during your audition, you know, on, on The Voice. But every other performance, just everybody everybody was so on their feet and just cheering and dancing and rocking out to you. And they just, you had that crowd wild every single time they all wanted more and everybody at home just, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. And your energy is just, you're such a positive person and you bring this positive energy with you that is just so infectious. Just everybody just takes it on. And, and I'm telling you, I mean, watching Shakira stand up there and rock out and then watching Adam stand up and it was just like, you know, this is great. This is great. So that, that had to have just been one of the most awesome experiences. And I'm so glad you got to have it because I don't think enough people in the world get to have positive experiences like that, you know? So oh, for, sure. for uh, sure. And it's funny because a lot of people, you know, when they see me, they, they say they're sorry that I didn't win. And I said, I, I still win. Oh, I mean, definitely. I got to go on some, an amazing journey with so many great people, and, and how many people you know can say that they had that kind of experience or that kind right. of exposure or anything like that? So right. I mean, there's just so many things that you know. It's just all how you look at it, and I try to Absolutely. be positive with everything. You know, you know walking away and not coming out number one is totally fine because right. I still was there till the very end, and uh, yep. and had such such a cool experience. So. Now it's just a really great platform to jump off of, and it just gives me that drive because being on stage and, and being in front of cameras was different. Right. Because you, know, you know that you have an audience of, you know, way more than what you can see in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I just got live audience was super fun, and so then it just makes me want, you know, to sell out arena tours, you know, essentially. Right. Right. Now, now being that you're going to be in Nashville now, you please tell me you have plans to play CMA Fest. Uh, I was actually at the MA Fest this year, um, so I'm hoping to be back there and do another run at it. I was at the at t U-verse stage this year. Perfect. I'm so yeah. excited. So I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. Um, I was working CMA Fest last year, but I didn't get to catch so many people. Like it was, it was a crazy time, and you never. I mean, there's so much that goes on during CMA Fest. So oh, you can't do everything. You know, there's so many things mm -hmm. to, to be. Uh, to go to there's just like so much being offered at one time you should oh, yeah. try to pick and choose where you want to be at what time <laughs> absolutely absolutely then the year before that I was street teaming so you know what I mean it was just it, it's been it's been kind of crazy but this year when I go I'm like I know I need to have like a full-blown schedule ahead of time because it can be definitely overwhelming but I'm so glad I'm so glad you have plans to go back because I missed so many people when I was there last year trying to do all these other things and um so that that'll be exciting and just for the fans who don't know, you have a birthday coming up. I do. <laughs> you do well. That. It it says it on your website on your on your tour. I looked up your tour dates oh, and it said true. your it said your birthday was on there. I was like, ooh, yay! So um, this is going to be your first birthday living in your new place. And so, yeah. do you have any awesome plans? Um. I, my my plan was going to be like to try to keep tradition, and my family and I would always get a Christmas tree on my birthday since it's twelve days before Christmas. Oh, so awesome. I feel like that's probably something I'll do, decorate a little bit, and then I'm sure I'll be enjoying beverages at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome! I am so excited, and um, I cannot wait to hear more from you. Do you ha do you have um, anything you want to tell the fans that you have coming up, maybe? 
I've got plans for the next album coming up, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if I can get snippets up, I will. But I'm very excited about a lot of the new stuff I've been writing and uh, some of the actual songs I've been pitched are really good. So it's, uh, it's going to be hard to pick which ones I want to put on this next mm-hmm. one, but I, I can't wait. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we can't wait either, especially me. I definitely could not wait. And uh, keep a, keep us in, in, you know, keep in touch and let us know what you have going on so we can keep promoting you. Um, and definitely have an amazing birthday. Have an amazing Christmas with your family. And congratulations on everything so far. And I just, I'm rooting for you. And everybody here at Center Stage, just they just want to see you succeed. Um, you're so talented. And just, just keep doing what you do, man, because you do it so well you you're brilliant thank you we all love you so (laughs) no problem (laughs) problem. i'm doing something right then (laughs) you definitely are so you know just just keep it up and um you know we 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 know we know great things are coming for you we can just we can see it all now so just don't forget us on your way up to the top (laughs) never never, all right absolutely well, and once I make it back out to Nashville, I'll have to, like, catch one of your shows live so that I can, you know, maybe maybe get some on-camera footage of you for everybody, too. That'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. Let me know when you're in town. Oh, I will. I will definitely. And, you know, like I said, just have an amazing Christmas and birthday and um, just be happy and keep up that positive energy because so many people will benefit from it. I, I just I adore you. And thank you so much for giving us the time to talk to you today. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate it. No no problem. We will talk to you soon. But if there's anything you want to, you know, let us know. Just make sure you keep in touch. Sounds good. I will do. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.